What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be meal prepping freezer meals for when I go into labor. I am currently pregnant with my first baby. I am 32 weeks and I just wanted to get a head start. I am planning on doing three of these freezer meal prep videos and having about a week's worth of meals in each one. So it's going to be like dinner meals, breakfasts, and some breastfeeding snacks. I will try and link as many of the recipes I can down below and I'll be explaining my process. Some of the things are going to be kind of pre-cooked and frozen and then some of them are going to be raw but frozen in their raw form and then we can cook them along with like a side or veggie or something like that um once i give birth i'm going to create probably a little like checklist thing that my husband can use so that way we can keep track of like what we pulled out of the freezer what we ate already and if he has to make like a side like rice or potatoes or something along with the meal so i created a list for my week one one of freezer meal prep for breakfast today. I'm gonna to be making breakfast burritos to freeze, sourdough pancakes to freeze, and then I'm just going to freeze a pack of bacon so that way that can easily be pulled out whenever we would pull out the pancakes. And I'm gonna be making a French toast bake. I'm just using some sourdough sliced bread that I already have in my freezer that I made a few weeks ago, but you could obviously use like whatever bread you want. For lunch or dinners, I'm gonna be making a meatloaf to freeze. I'm going to be slow cooking a like beef roast and making that into barbecue beef so that will be cooked. The meatloaf will be raw and just baked from raw. I'm gonna be making a sausage tortellini skillet with veggies in it tuna casserole and chicken tikka masala. So some of these like proteins like meatloaf and the chicken tikka masala, I'll have to have directions included for Alvin to be able to make like a rice on the side or veggie on the side since it's not technically a full meal, but it will be very helpful to already have these proteins cooked. Then for snacks, I'm making like granola cookies and a no bake chocolate bar. And then I am getting a few already prepared frozen meals each week so for this week i actually bought the stover's uh like white vegetarian lasagna because we love that lasagna i got it in like the family size and i'm just keeping that in my deep freezer in order to have just an extra meal and for other weeks i'm also going to be having a few more of those like really easy freezer prep meals that I could have just bought and had just for extras. And of course then they're gonna last a little bit longer than the meals that I prep. So at least we'll have some meals for a month or so along with, I have a meal train with people signing up to help bring meals once baby is born as well. So with all of the ingredients needed for this first week of meal prep, it came out to $106.91. I just bought this stuff from Walmart and that did include me getting like 40 bags of freezer bags, some aluminum foil because I needed that. And then I also got um, a few of these aluminum containers so that way I can easily freeze in these and bake from these. I was able to get a big five pound bag of rice to have as backup, but I will be buying like a big bag of potatoes once I get closer to birth. So that way those can be used for sides. And then I'm gonna be buying a bunch of the like, you know, just great value frozen vegetables that we really like. So mixed veggies, green beans, the cauliflower blend, but I don't have room in my freezer to do that this early so once we get closer i'll be doing just like a minimal order of some sides that can go with some of these things like the meatloaf and stuff and then that way it's easy for my husband to just throw a bag of frozen veggies in the microwave throw the meatloaf in the oven and we'll be good to go i'm gonna get started making this stuff don't forget, I'll have two other videos after this. Once they go live, I will put them down in the description box so you can find them, but make sure you watch all three parts if you wanna get three weeks worth of meals and snacks and breakfasts and stuff. First, I'm going to start out with cooking my bacon to get those ready for the breakfast burritos. I always like making my bacon in the oven because you can make it all at one time and it makes way less of a mess than actually frying bacon on your stovetop. So I just put parchment paper on a sheet pan and I do have this little tray, but you don't have to use that. You can just put the bacon on the tray and I'm going to bake that at 400 degrees until it's like pretty much crispy and done. 
I am starting out making the French toast bake. This I got from the blog Farmhouse on Boone, so I will link her recipe down below. It's a bunch of eggs, milk, maple syrup, spices, vanilla extract, and then I had made this sourdough loaf bread and I had it in the freezer, um, but I wanted to use this up since I'm going to be making some fresh loaves of bread for once my baby is born. So I figured this would be perfect for me to use in this French toast recipe. So I'm just making two of these and I'm putting the cubes of bread into the little aluminum foil tins. I'm adding raisins and the apples because this is just what it called for in her recipe. I'm just chopping up the apples pretty finely and then those are gonna be added to the bread and the raisin mixture as well. Then it said to pour some melted butter over top of these and then you're going to add like the custard mixture which was like the eggs and the milk and the spices and stuff. So I'm just equally adding that over top and I'm going to push down with a spoon just to make sure that like the bread is kind of soaked through and then I'll just write my directions on the lid and get those in the freezer like nice and prepared up so I'm writing out exactly you know if, if Alvin were to make this um, that way he knows exactly what to do if I'm not there being able to give directions now I'm going to work on the tuna casserole recipe this is a recipe that my mom always made growing up so I'm just kind of using her recipe and I've heard that you can freeze it and that it would be fine what I ended up up doing was when I cooked the noodles I didn't cook them all the way until they were done that way they're not gonna get too mushy when we actually bake this but everything is going to be pre-cooked in this so it will just have to be heated up to like warm and bubbly and whenever we think the noodles are actually done I can leave like an easy recipe down below if you don't know how to make tuna casserole um, but it is just like cream of mushroom soup some milk peas cheese and some spices and tuna while I'm waiting on the noodles to cook for the tuna casserole I went ahead and put in this chicken tikka masala in the instapot and I did get this recipe just from online it's just a recipe for the instapot or the slow cooker um, I did instapot mine so I'll just put that recipe down below because there's a bunch of different spices and stuff I think I ended up using one packet of chicken thighs and cooking that for about 20 minutes All right, I'm putting the tuna casserole together. So I have the noodles and I poured the other mixture over top, gave that a good stir, and I'm just topping it with some shredded cheddar cheese. And so, like I said, when we do heat this up, it will just have to be warmed in the oven. Everything will be technically pre-cooked and the noodles should finish cooking at that time in the oven as well. Now I'm working on a sausage and tortellini skillet and I am using spinach and frozen broccoli and then this like kielbasa. And so this is all just gonna go in this bag and I am par cooking the tortellini just to make sure that they are going to be cooked when we do heat this up. And then this recipe that I found had this like cream cheesy sauce to go with it, like a garlic Alfredo, I guess, technically. So it was half and half olive oil, garlic i think some like oregano or basil and parmesan cheese and you freeze this with the rest of the contents so this is like a skillet recipe so you'll just have to pull it out of the freezer and kind of heat it up in the skillet and add the sauce and just let everything get thick together i mean it looks really good so we're just gonna hope that this turns out well <laughs>
All right, I'm gonna continue working on the breakfast burritos since the bacon has been out of the oven and cooling. I decided I wanted to cook up some peppers and onions to go in our burritos. So it's going to be peppers and onions, cheese, scrambled eggs, and bacon. So, I mean, you can do whatever toppings you like or fillings that you like in your breakfast burritos. I'm just cooking this until it is soft and then I am getting my scrambled eggs ready. So it's just a bunch of eggs and a little bit of half and half and I'm just gonna scramble those up with some salt. All right, for putting the burritos together, I'm just using some aluminum foil and like the medium size tortillas. These are flour tortillas and I'm just putting the cheese, the onions and peppers, the eggs and sprinkling bacon on the top. And then I'm just going to roll these up within the aluminum foil. And then it'll be really easy because this will all just be in a freezer bag and then we can just pull out a burrito and you can, you know, take off the aluminum foil and heat it up in the microwave for a few minutes or until, you know, heated all the way through. But everything is cooked in this. I feel like these are gonna be a big hit. Um, I love breakfast burritos and I love like savory breakfasts more than sweet breakfasts. So I feel like I'm going to be tearing up these burritos after birth and Alvin's probably gonna be loving like the pancakes that I'm gonna be making in a little bit because he loves like sweet breakfasts more. All right, the chicken tikka is done. So I'm just gonna add, I had a little bit of extra frozen spinach from the tortellini skillet. So I'm just adding some spinach to this and shredding it up. And then that's just gonna go in a freezer bag after it cools off a little bit. This is one of those meals that obviously Alvin will make like rice with it and probably like broccoli or cauliflower once we actually are using the chicken tikka masala. I'm now getting my big like roast in here because I'm gonna slow cook this overnight. This is gonna be barbecue beef. So I just added, I think some salt and like garlic powder. And then this is actually the next morning. So I let this beef slow cook. This was an arm roast, I believe from my brother's farm. And I just let it slow cook all the way overnight. So that way it was low and slow. I went ahead and shredded it up and I'm adding barbecue sauce and I'm just gonna stick those in two freezer bags. I decided to do two like small freezer bags. That way we could easily like pull one out for like a lunch and have like barbecue sandwiches and like a salad on the side or like, you know, raw veggies on the side or something. And then that way you're not thawing out like a huge thing of beef barbecue and you feel like you're just eating the same meal for days and days. So I tried to make this a little bit smaller portions so we wouldn't get tired of it. Now I'm working on the meatloaf. Um, I just kind of make my meatloaf different all the time. It's just kind of like what I have. I always add Worcestershire, some liquid smoke. I use tomato paste to make it moist and I am adding oatmeal this time just because of it being in the freezer. I want it to be extra moist, but a lot of times I don't add breadcrumbs or oatmeal or anything because I like to do a mixture of beef and pork, but I didn't have that this time. So this was two pounds of ground beef, two eggs, the spices and the oatmeal and the tomato paste and stuff. And this is raw. So this is going in the freezer raw. I'm just putting some parchment paper on it and then I'm gonna put the aluminum foil and then it's gonna go in a freezer bag just because I don't want this to get like freezer burnt. And so each one of these, I guess is like one pound since I did like two pounds of meat. Um, so that will be like two different meals. And so that way, again, we don't have to eat meatloaf for like days and days and days. Now I'm gonna work working on some snacks. So these are like a granola lactation cookie. I will put the recipe down below. They were supposed to be muesli, but the store was out of it. So I just used a package of granola and these were really easy to mix up because of using like already prepackaged granola. 
I thought they were a little dry, so I did add some milk, but they tasted so good. I ate one as a taste test, so I will leave this recipe down below. And those will be great for just like snacks, middle of the night snacks. I hear with breastfeeding, you just get so incredibly hungry in the middle of the night. So I wanted to have some easy, you know, things I could just grab. I'll have some prepackaged snacks as well, but I wanted to be able to make some lactation ones too. Now I'm gonna be working on the sourdough pancakes. This will be just a bunch of pancakes I'm gonna freeze. Um, I'm using coconut oil that I melted and a whole bunch of my sourdough starter. And then I add eggs and I think like honey and maybe some like baking soda, but this is a super easy recipe. I got this from Farmhouse on Boone and these are the pancakes I make all the time. So again, I will put that recipe down below for you. And I love cooking these in my cast iron pan because it makes them crispy and just so delicious and then I just let them cool and I went ahead and layered them in a freezer bag so that way we could easily pull them out like they're layered with parchment paper so they didn't all stick together. All right, lastly, I am making a like lactation no-bake bar. So this had a banana, peanut butter, cocoa powder, walnuts, raisins, coconut, chia, flaxseed. I believe that there was a recipe I followed, so I'll try and link it down below for you guys. And you just kind of mix this all up with some melted coconut oil and you pressed it into a pan. And then I did let this freeze overnight and I cut it the next morning. So I cut it into bars. It kind of reminds me of like a Lar bar or an RX bar, but not with like a million dates in it. So it's definitely not very sweet, which I really enjoy because I feel like this is gonna be almost like a fat bomb. Like it's very fatty and has a lot of nutrients in it without it being like a candy bar. And I feel like this is gonna be a perfect snack in order to pull out of the freezer and eat this and be able to keep me full for breastfeeding. So I really like how these turned out and they were just so, so easy to make. So I definitely recommend making these. Here they are the next day, like with me cutting them into squares and I just wrapped them into parchment and put them in a little bag to store in the freezer. All right, so this was everything that I made for one week of meals with breakfasts and snacks and dinners and everything for my postpartum journey. I love the way everything turned out and I'm excited for week two. So I will see you guys in another video.